Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to give you an introductory look at the difference between Python and the Logic Bricks, and really the advantages you have when you work with uh, the Logic Bricks and Python at the same time. So, well, actually, we'll address states as well. So, notice in here I have the same routine that's just, in this case, all I have is a space key that I've titled space, and it's tied right now to a Python script right here, but I'm going to get rid of that for a second. And instead of that, I'll just add an AND controller. Actually, just by connecting it up, it'll give me a controller that'll work just like this. So in here I have, let's see, I have a tap sensor set, I mean the tap level. So when I run it, it's going to rotate it on five degrees. So every time I press the spacebar key, it does it one time like this, all right? Or well, if I take the put, I put this on instead and I run it, it just runs it as I'm holding that space key down like this. Okay, so that's all well and good. But now what I can also do is I get rid of that and instead I add a different controller. I add a Python controller and I go grab a Python file. And the Python file basically is contr controlling this actuator over here for the rotation. So it basically, if, if I put this back to tap, you can see if I run it, well, it's not working on a tap. It's actually working off of the Python file. So I've overridden the Python script, yet I've still maintained these in here. So this gives me an advantage in a big way because it allows me to kind of change things on the fly versus this, you have to come back and reset it. Except there is, if you don't want to work with Python, there is one thing you can do. Let me go full screen on this real quick. And that's using states. States are like layers in the render engine. You know, when you change the layers up here. Well, you can do th the same thing with these logic bricks as well. You can kind of preset different things that you want to have happen. So, for instance, if I press this little plus button right here, it brings up this finite state machine. It shows us that it's on layer one right now. Basically, these logic bricks are on layer one. And with this selected here, that's what's going to run. So I'm going to go to layer two instead, and I'm going to add the same kind of thing Except, well, actually, one way I could do it if I just press that pin button and that pin button, then if I go to layer two over here, those two still stay there, but this middle one doesn't exist, so I'm going to add a different controller. And in this case, I'm going to add an AND controller to connect these together. This, and if I go look, basically there's state one, or layer one of the states, is working off my Python script, and on layer two, it's working off the AND controller. So, but when I start it, it's going to start either based on what I have have selected here. So let me start on layer one for the state, which is layer one. And well, visibly, I can't see what it is because I'm looking at it. So I have to see what, what layer one is. Layer one's working off my Python script. So that's going to override my tap sensor. So I'm going to press P and see that I can't tap it it's just rotating that's that's my Python script actually running it but now if I go look at what layer 2 looks like and that's just the AND controller which the AND controller we know is tied to it so that should work the tap but in order for layer 2 to run I have to be on layer 2 there so now when I run it now when I press it there it is the tap sensor is the tap is actually working. So basically it gives me two distinct sets of logic bricks, similar to how when you're in a layer, I might have in this layer, you know, I might have this particular setup like this. But if I went to layer two, you know, by adding that, maybe I have all this, but maybe I have another light or something in this layer so it does something entirely different. So this is a really powerful feature, this finite state machine that they have built in here. But I cover that in detail in my uh, intermediate and advanced tutorials because that can be a fairly uh, difficult subject and most of those that work is to, is uh, Python based. So because really Python is really where you get the real power when working with in the game engine. The logic bricks are super powerful, don't get me wrong, but if you want real superpower, oh yeah, Python is the only way to go. Okay, well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.